Well, a very good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Candy Talk here on Haman Manyera's YouTube channel. Such a pleasure to always have you on Kenya's most comprehensive political and uh, public governance analysis show. My name is Evans Okinyi, and I'm glad to have you on board. Well, once again, this fine morning, I'm joined by Wakili Weli Sotino. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very and much. And we are here. We want to make our viewers understand what is actually uh, taking place in this country and the kind of impacts that some of the uh, government's decisions on policies definitely have on the lives and livelihoods here. In Now, one, I want us to have this conversation. The uh, National Dialogue committee has actually officially tabled their report to uh, the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga as well as the President as well. And we are here looking at the kind of report that was actually given to them. Of course, the former Prime Minister said that that uh, report should be implemented as it is. Do you think that justice has been done to the common man with the contents of that particular document? Not to the extent that uh, the price of basic items mm -hmm. still keeps going up. Yes. To the extent that Kenya Kwanza is still increasing taxes on the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And lie to the extent that the economy of Kenya mm -hmm. is now in doldrums. We can safely say that report has not addressed what the issue that Kenyans wanted to be addressed. What seems to have concurrence or congruence of uh, interest mm -hmm. is on the question of reconstituting the IBC, the IBC questions. Mm -hmm and setting up uh, additional officers, leader of official opposition, mm -hmm. prime minister, mm -hmm. okay. have been settled in that report. Mm -hmm. So this report has not addressed the bread and butter issues that affect Kenyans today. Mm -hmm. And it is very important that we note that some of the changes they are proposing mm -hmm. will actually require a constitutional referendum. Mm -hmm. And uh, we welcome that invitation to participate in a referendum mm -hmm. And the people of Kenya in their numbers will uh, unanimously mm -hmm. reject any proposal placed on the table mm -hmm. that gives jobs to people at the top without addressing the economic challenges mm -hmm. that Kenyans are facing today. We have more unemployed youths who have qualified mm -hmm. either university, tertiary colleges, even gone through artisan, artisan, artisan training that cannot get jobs. More and more Kenyans are not able to earn a dollar a day. And that is what Kenya Kwanza is doing to them. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have a political administration that is tone deaf to the cries and the pain that Kenyans are going through, mm -hmm. and that is more accommodative to creating positions mm -hmm. and uh, offices okay. for people in political leadership, mm -hmm. as opposed to addressing the germane issues that affect Kenyans mm -hmm which is a failed economic system. Okay. And uh, if they want to meet the wrath of Kenyans, let them bring that NATCO report through a referendum bill mm -hmm. to create those positions. And I assure you here today, mm -hmm. that report will be rejected. And any amendment bill mm -hmm. that it proposes to create positions mm -hmm. before addressing the economic challenges that Kenyans are facing. Mm -hmm. The first step is that we must deal with what Safina we are calling the people's agenda. The people's agenda is supreme, mm -hmm. and that is what should be given first priority okay. before we discuss the other components of that report. Mm -hmm. And that report, having not addressed the people's agenda, then it's an incomplete report. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can revisit after the people's agenda mm -hmm. has been uh, discussed and solutions to the people's agenda okay. proposed mm -hmm. on the table. Mm -hmm. And we are very clear the people's agenda mm -hmm. is a working economy. Mm -hmm that creates jobs for our young people, that is commensurate with their qualifications, mm -hmm. a people's agenda that uh, delivers on our working healthcare system, that deploys uh, qualified personnel to health facilities, that equips health facilities with necessary equipment to attend to the health needs of Kenyans. A people's agenda that makes the cost of living bearable, that Kenyans should not be living in a in penury, they are not able to afford basic meals in a day. A people's agenda that is anti-increasing taxation, arbitrarily, like Kenya Kwanza continues to do. A people's agenda that's against increasing mm -hmm. government levies and charges okay. for every service that Kenya government offers to the people. Mm -hmm. Because 
government services are financed using our tax money that have already been collected anyway. Mm -hmm. Why then should we be made okay. to pay additional sums when these services are being offered? I told you last time that for the first time in the history of Kenya, mm -hmm. you have to pay money to be registered and give an identity document mm -hmm. that confirms your registration as a Kenyan citizen. Whereas the bulk of those who need these ID cards mm -hmm. are unemployed youths who do not uh, have an opportunity to earn a living. In fact, mm -hmm. they are largely looking for that ID card to be able to participate in the social economic uh, engagements in the country. Okay. When you ask them to pay 300 Kenya shillings mm -hmm. before they can be registered, mm -hmm. you're actually punishing them okay. for being poor. Mm -hmm. Poverty that is caused by your failed economic policies. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get you, oh, of course, Wakili, you here saying that uh, the people's main agenda was not actually looked into in this particular report. But I want us to uh, look at the uh, tiny details of uh, this particular report and begin with the IBC question. Of course, uh, the electoral question has been here with us and uh, actually drove us to where we are at that particular moment. These people have agreed that uh, they should actually uh, settle now on evaluation of the uh, electoral process of uh, the last general election of course 2022 as opposed to opening of the IBC servers. Uh, what's your take on this? Does it actually service it? Does it you help? Know, as I say, uh -huh. Review of elections uh -huh. is something that already in the Elections Act and Regulations made uh -huh. there under. Uh -huh. IBC is supposed to be conducting a review uh -huh. of the previous election uh -huh. and should be a consistent process uh -huh. so that you start proposing measures that needs to be taken into account uh -huh. in preparation for the next elections. So we don't need an article report mm -hmm. to do a review of elections. That is a constant already in our laws. Mm -hmm. A review of uh, the performance in the last elections, the technology deployed in that elections, an engagement by the commissions with stakeholders mm -hmm. in the electoral process on how to improve the electoral landscape mm -hmm. and the conduct of elections in this country. So that one, that should be going on. But when you have a national dialogue, mm -hmm. the main issue that needs to be discussed is what, as we've christened, as the people's agenda. Mm -hmm. That is where you can say we are going to take a policy position as a people mm -hmm. on how our agenda should infuse itself into any mm -hmm. policy decision mm -hmm. uh, that is being implemented or being made mm -hmm. by the serving government. That people's agenda, we are saying, is not there. So the review of elections mm -hmm. is already a constant. It's already catered for mm -hmm. in our laws. And it's something that IBC constantly has to do. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to have a con convocation of people at Bomas of Kenya mm -hmm. for that review of elections to take place. Because part of the review is to guide you that what went wrong in the last election, mm -hmm. what do we need to improve? Mm -hmm. So that's okay, that is welcome, but it should not distract us. Mm -hmm from what we are calling the people's agenda. But do you think, do you think, do you think um, evaluating the uh, entire electoral process of uh, 2022 would actually solve the problem that these people wanted to solve by insisting that the government uh, ensure that the ABC servers are opened? No, no, you see the review uh -huh. may, is not a question of uh, challenging uh -huh. the outcome of that election. Review simply means you're looking at how the process was conducted, uh -huh. identifying the gaps and proposing solutions uh -huh. for future elections. It is not an inquest into the conduct of that election. Mm -hmm. So we are not conducting an inquest, an inquiry sort of, mm -hmm. in the conduct of that election with a view to take punitive measures mm -hmm. or administrative sanctions mm -hmm. on those who may have messed up in the elections. It is a review to identify the gaps mm -hmm. and to propose ch changes that will improve on the quality of elections mm -hmm. when they are next held. Mm -hmm. So that does not attend to the question you are posing. Okay. If this review, for example, will lead to the opening of the servers mm -hmm. to show Kenyans who won, who lost. The review will be, were the servers, for example, were mm -hmm. they tamper-proof, mm -hmm. were they, was there manipulation, mm -hmm. and what measures can we take to protect those servers mm -hmm. from external influence? What do we need to put in place to make sure that political parties mm -hmm. and candidates mm -hmm. have access to the servers real-time, mm -hmm. or the contents of the servers real-time, as elections are being streamed? That is part of the thing that I would say that mm -hmm. IBC cannot have exclusive control and access to the servers when elections are taking place. Mm -hmm. Because a rogue IBC, like the one that was led by Chebukati, mm -hmm. can easily manipulate the will of the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that undermines 
democratic participation mm -hmm. of our people mm -hmm. in the politics. Okay. You, you, you've been part of the, uh, of course, the presidential election petition, and I saw you there at the Supreme Court. Now, my, my question on this issue of opening servers vis-a-vis -vis evaluating or reviewing the entire process. Now, these two sides were, are actually, actually at loggerheads, and these are very contentious issues that were uh, that actually brought us where we were uh, during that particular moment. But then here we are. Do you think it's possible for the servers to be opened? And if it's possible, why do you think that... Uh, the government side was kind of hesitant and they do not actually want anything to do with open servers to be discussed. Because if you open the servers, you'll find something. Uh -huh. You'll find transaction logs. Okay. Transaction logs that will tell you a story uh -huh. of who was accessing that system and what did they do. Uh -huh. So obviously, it will bring into question the legitimacy of this administration. Uh -huh. And they will do everything possible to stop any such exercise. Uh -huh. Because doing so, will uh, dent their credibility further mm -hmm. in the eyes of Kenyans. So they will not want to do it. If they had won free and square and the server information was not manipulated, mm -hmm. they would actually be the first group okay. that will uh, be proposing uh, mm -hmm. for the opening of the servers. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the unfortunate thing about this question of servers, mm -hmm. we normally reduce it to be a contestation between the ruling party and the opposition. Mm -hmm. And the ruling party is saying we will not open. You know, subconscious what they're telling you is they have control mm -hmm. of that system. Mm -hmm. And yet IBC is meant to be independent. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. That one of the players is saying, I will decide if I'm the, you're going to VR. How? VR should be done by the referee's call. Mm -hmm. The referee's owner should decide, I'm going to check VR. Then he goes there on his own. But in Kenya, we have subconsciously almost accepted mm -hmm. that the ruling party has a say on whether that server should be accessed. Why is the ruling party the one? Because they were players, mm -hmm. just like the opposition. They can't be the ones saying we must go to VR or we are not going to VR. No. Mm -hmm. This should have been a decision made independently by IBC. And upon request, give us access from both sides. Mm -hmm. Then IBC itself says we will give you access or we will not. And give you a reasons why you not give access. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at our Article 10, accountability and transparency mm -hmm. are key components of our principles of governance. Mm -hmm. But we are discussing the opening of the servers as if those servers are now under the custody mm -hmm. of William Root and Kenya Kwanza. That alone tells you mm -hmm. a big problem in the elections. Okay. Because they are players in the, they are players in the field. The VR machine in football mm -hmm. cannot be kept under the custody of the coach of one team that is playing. Mm -hmm. The VR machine should be independently held by the referee of the game, mm -hmm. who is deemed to be independent and not under the control of any of the players mm -hmm. on the field. But in this particular case, that VR, the servers, seems to be under the direct control of William Ruto and Kenya Kwanza. Mm -hmm. And if they say open, you open. If they say don't open, you don't open. Mm -hmm. You've lost the elections. You've lost the credibility of the elections even before you cast the first ballot. Mm -hmm. Because one set has full control of a key component mm -hmm. of the electoral infrastructure okay. that should be held under safe custody mm -hmm. of the referee. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Now here we are. The president uh, said clearly that he's not going to engage in politics of creating positions uh, for the big wig, so to say. But then we have found ourselves in this kind of situation, in the same, same scenario. We saw the president also uh, actually oppose the BBI uh, kind of program that uh, was brought in before actually the elections therein. But then here we are. Don't you think we are going back to that same uh, uh, process that uh, the courts declared uh, unconstitutional, null and void? Why do you believe William Root? What has he ever said that was true? He speaks for convenience. Mm -hmm. He speaks for the moment. The convenience of the moment. What is convenient to say today? Mm -hmm. So, I would actually not be surprised. I'm back. I don't even fault him. Mm -hmm. That is who he is. The problem with Kenyans who believe him when he says those things. Mm -hmm. Because he has been in public service all mm -hmm. these years. Mm -hmm. And he's been consistent. He's never lied. Mm -hmm. He always speaks the truth. 
his truth is to mislead you. So if you choose to believe his statements, mm -hmm. then the problem is with you, not with him. Because he has been consistent in giving inaccurate statements. Mm -hmm. That's his consistency. Then the voter or whoever is believing what he says, then that's the person with the problem, not William Root. Because him is consistent. He will say this today because it's convenient, then tomorrow he will say something different. Because it's convenient. That is who he is. So take him as you find him. Deal with him as you find him. <laughs> that whatever he says, the opposite will happen. That is how I take him. There's nothing he says that comes to pass. <laughs> he does the opposite. So that is who he is. So whenever he speaks, I organize my life with the opposite. <laughs> so I'm not disappointed. I don't hold him to high esteem. Okay. When that happened, because then I'm, my expectations mm -hmm. were not raised. I was expecting the opposite. In fact, mm -hmm. I actually thank him for signposting me to the right direction mm -hmm. by saying A, and I know B will happen, not A. Mm -hmm. So why do we make it a big issue? It should, be, it should be now an accepted fact in this mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. that William Ruth does not mean what he says. And anybody who still believes what he says, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. If you still want to listen to him, mm -hmm. the joke is on you. Mm -hmm. Not on him. We should stop listening to whatever he says. So if we listen, mm -hmm. use it as a signpost. He tells you A, plan for B. Mm -hmm. He tells you B, plan for C. Okay. Then we'll have a better engagement with him. Mm -hmm. We'll be actually be able to plan this country and run this country in a more effective way mm -hmm. than it's being done today. Okay. Mm. Looking at the contents of that particular document that was tabled in. The former Prime Minister says it should be implemented as it is. Uh, the President, of course, also endorsed and accepted that kind of document. And uh, it was so far so good. I think the opposition and the government side uh, have agreed on one thing here. The cost of living has not been addressed, of course, that is something that you've talked about. But then looking at the content uh, with regards to this kind of positions that we're witnessing, the official uh, leader of opposition, uh, of course, Prime Minister with the two deputies there in entrenching that kind of position that is currently held by um, Salia Mudavadi into the constitution. We've got the uh, NGCDF being entrenched into the constitution as well as uh, creation of the Senate Oversight Fund. Now, all these actually will lead to some sort of an alteration in our governance structure. Uh, do you foresee a situation whereby we have to go for a referendum? Of course, all uh -huh. those things you've mentioned. <laughs> are referendum issues, chapter 18 of the Constitution. Okay. They must be taken to the people of Kenya in a referendum. Mm -hmm. And as I've told you, let them, Kenya Kwanza, mm -hmm. uh, move with the conviction of their courage mm -hmm. and draft those bills and take them to the people. Mm -hmm. I assure you, that referendum will return a resounding no because the people's agenda is not in those bills. Mm -hmm. MPs are getting their CDF and trenching the constitution. Senators mm -hmm. are getting their oversight fund. Uh, the executives, they are getting their prime minister. Mm -hmm. Opposition are getting their leader of official opposition funded by a taxpayer's money. Mm -hmm. But no one is talking about the contributor of the money. What is being done to improve the lot of the person whose money is being used to manage or run these offices yes. and these funds? Mm -hmm. Let it go to the people. And I assure you, Kenyans will reject mm -hmm. all those bills. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank God that our constitution has drafted, has actually made certain things that must be taken to a referendum. Mm -hmm. Changing the structure of the executive, mm -hmm. the role of parliament and its composition, uh, changing or altering the structure of devolution, all the three you've mentioned affect this component. Mm -hmm. Because the CDF and oversight fund, Senate oversight fund, mm -hmm. affects devolution. The Prime Minister changes the structure of the executive. Mm -hmm. the, the issue of uh, leader of official opposition mm -hmm. again affects the role of parliament, mm -hmm. the functioning of parliament. Take it. Mm -hmm. Those are referendum questions. Okay. Those issues must be taken to the people of Kenya in a referendum. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, Kenyans are waiting. Mm -hmm. And they will vote in a way that no politician has ever seen in this country, mm -hmm. if they dare. But I can say it here. Mm -hmm. They are not stupid enough. Mm -hmm. They will not dare. Okay. They will not dare. But they will not dare yet. The former Prime Minister says that uh, it should be implemented as I it is without being altered. Let them draft uh -huh. the bills and uh -huh. take it to the people in a referendum. Uh -huh. 
let the rubber meet the road. Mm -hmm. You cannot go to the people who are hungry. Mm -hmm. They are being overtaxed every day. Mm -hmm. They are being charged new levies every day. Mm -hmm. Then you take to them a document that is just going to impose more levies and charges and taxes on them. Mm -hmm. And you expect them to pass it without addressing the germane issue that affects them, mm -hmm. which is the cost of living. Let them try. One of the demands of uh, the opposition at that particular moment was, of course, on the cost of living. The other one was uh, to do with the scrapping, uh, yeah, scrapping off of the housing levy and even uh, reducing the uh, fuel tax, of course, from 16% maybe to 8%. That kind of uh, statement was also there. All these things, the government said, especially on the cost of living, the government side said it's their mandate and that should be left to them to deal with. Now, the, it's like the opposition obliged and left them, uh, the, the government to actually deal with its mandate. Do you think that uh, the government as currently constituted will be able to deal with the cost of living as, as uh, they've been left to? Mm, for the last one year, now the second year, mm -hmm. there's one constant that all Kenyans agree. Okay. That today, mm -hmm. you're feeling more pain than we felt yesterday. And you're guaranteed tomorrow you'll feel more pain than mm -hmm. you felt today. Mm -hmm. And the cost of living keeps going up. There is unanimity on that across the divide. Mm -hmm. All Kenyans agree that the cost of living has gone up. Mm -hmm. It is spiraling and has spiraled out of control. Mm -hmm. So that is the mandate that Kenya Kwanza claims they have. They've not dealt with it and they'll never deal with it anyway. Mm -hmm. What has Kenya Kwanza ever come up with that worked out successfully? Nothing. Mm -hmm. What economic intervention have they come up with that in the long term? Gave the people of Kenya some relief or benefit. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. That is their track record. So it's their skunk. Mm -hmm. And as good as Emir told them to stay with your skunk, we don't want to discuss it. Mm -hmm. But the only problem will be when Azimio decides to be roped mm -hmm. into a joint campaign to create positions. Then you see now Azimio will be dragged into the conversation between Kenya Kwanza and the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. That you are pushing this, but our people's agenda is not on the table. Okay. How do we continue with it? Mm -hmm. That will be problematic. And I want to see how Azimio will uh, weave its way through that. Mm -hmm. Kenya Kwanza has no solution to the spiraling cost of living. Any intervention they've attempted, mm -hmm. they have all failed. G2G failed. Mapima edible oil failed, mm -hmm. fertilizer failed. Mm -hmm. What else? Affordable housing failed in the courts. Mm -hmm. We are now almost in the second year and there is not a single unit that has been occupied. Mm -hmm. The economic impact of that affordable housing, whatever has been done, cannot be felt. Mm -hmm. More and more Kenyans are unemployed this year than they were last year. Mm -hmm. More and more will be unemployed tomorrow than they are today. Mm -hmm. So it has all failed. So what are we waiting for? When somebody tells you who he is, believe him. Okay. Kenya Kwanza has told you we are failures. Believe mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Believe them that they are failures. They have told you in their own words and in their conduct. Mm -hmm. Why are you doubting them? Where does this leave us now, Wakili? Where, where, where does this leave us, us now? It to what we call the people's agenda. Mm -hmm. And a campaign that will talk about the people's agenda. Mm -hmm. That should be the key focus in our political conversations going forward, mm -hmm. the people's agenda. Okay. How do we make life bearable to all Kenyans? What economic interventions are we going to pursue mm -hmm. that will improve the lot of our people? Okay. Anything short of that is going to be rejected by Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans are now the cleverer. They are no longer fools. We are going through what, as with Safina Party, we term, mm -hmm the third and final liberation, mm -hmm. the economic liberation of this nation. That is why every Kenyan is now talking about the cost of living, mm -hmm. the economy, mm -hmm. regardless of their political affiliation. And you are not seeing the two sides that mm -hmm. have been profiled as proposing tangible solutions. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see the margins. So, so you're saying in as much as uh, the uh, Zimiel or Moja one Kenya side has left that to the government, there's no running away from the... Uh, issue of the cost of living that they has to be addressed by the government. Because that is the people's agenda. Uh -huh. It okay. will still stick there as a soft mm -hmm. Nobody run away from it. 
if you want political engagement with the people, mm -hmm. you must at first instance deal with the cost of living or at least make proposals that deal with the cost of living that are workable, okay. not empty campaign slogans. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a conversation here with Wakili Willis Otieno on actually the uh, report that was actually officially handled to the president and former prime minister that is uh, from the National Dialogue Committee. Do you think that your own interests were actually uh, addressed in that particular report as a Kenyan? Well, let's wait and see uh, the kind of trajectory that we will take as a country, whether this report will be implemented. But of course, as you've heard here, is that some of the issues there are so contentious that they might require uh, Kenyans to get back to the ballot through the referendum therein. Let's wait and see what will unfold. But even as we wait, remember our team is here on the ground and we shall keep you updated with comprehensive analysis of all that is taking place in this country and across our borders. Till we have this conversation again, have yourself a lovely day. My name is Evans. Okay.